Hello, and welcome to the Visualizing Tosca Service Templates with the CloudNet Tosca Toolkit. This is our latest installment in the um, Tosca implementation stories. We have many um, that are already uploaded and recorded to YouTube. I will send a follow-up email after this session and include a link to all of our implementation stories, obviously with this one as well, since we know it's being recorded. We ask you to hold your questions till the end. Feel free to um, type your questions into the Q&A box if you'd like to chat. During the session, feel free to use the chat box as well. We have um, our principal speaker today is Philippe Merrill. He is from Enria, which is located in Lille, France. Um, this Enria is a research facility focused on software engineering for distributed systems, especially the appliance of model-driven formal approaches for cloud computing. We will also be joined today by Chris Lowers. He is the chair of the OASIS Tosca Technical Committee and also the CEO of Ubicity Corporation. And with that, Philippe, I will hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm pleased to, to, to be here for this uh, webinar. I, I will present um, how we could visualize a Tosca service template uh, with uh, the CloudNet uh, Tosca toolbox. So to start, first to, to start, uh, just my uh, view of what is uh, Tosca. Tosca is a standard for infrastructure as code with a set of particularities uh, against the, the other technology for infrastructure as code. Firstly, is uh, agnostic uh, against the uh, infrastructures. He allows the uh, management of the life cycle of applications. So install, configure, start, stop uh, software packages. He provides a rich, stronger, strongly typed language. And with this language, we could define custom types for managing any kind of uh, resource or, or entities or resources or object. And another particularity is that it provides a notion of relationship, a way to type uh, dependencies, to, to associate properties and uh, um, a behavior to these uh, relationships. And uh, it provides two ways to express uh, management behavior. W workflows are activated by operator, human operators, and policy uh, uh, could implement trigger that react to events coming from the the external world of coming from the orchestrator, the Tosca orchestrator. So it's just to, to introduce uh, the, the presentation. So I, I will talk about, uh, in this presentation, I will talk about uh, what we call the CloudNet Tosca toolbox. In fact, is a, a Tosca implementation, and more precisely, a powerful set of Tosca processor that allow, for instance, to check the compliance of a, a service template to the Tosca grammar, to check the compliance of Tosca services, uh, Tosca, temp uh, Tosca template to the Tosca type system and its rules. Uh, this uh, toolbox provides uh, visual, visual diagram generators and provide uh, some, some other checker and generator. For, for instance, we could generate uh, automatically some imperative uh, workflows 
and I, I will show an example later. Um, so these toolbox uh, are designed and implemented to, to support uh, any version of uh, Tosca from the 1.0 to the 2.0. And, and in this presentation, in, in this webinar, I will focus on the uh, the generation of visual diagrams and uh, and i don't i will say nothing about the other processor of this toolbox uh, so to go directly in in the in the main part of this presentation uh, that which is um, mainly uh, addressing the, the, the notion of visualiz visualizing Tosca service templates. In, in, in fact, in our toolbox, we, we have defined a mapping between a Tosca concept and visual notation. So in Tosca, we, we have a, a set of concepts and mainly the notion of type and Tosca type are translated, represented by class UML class diagram. Uh, node and relationship templates are represented by different way. We could use comp component diagrams, deployment diagrams, network diagrams, uh, depending on what focus we we want to to have on the on a topology policies uh, tosca policies are represented by sequence diagram that represent the act the actions of the policies and the workflow are represented by activity diagram and in the next slides i, I will illustrate uh, all these diagrams uh, uh, on a set of examples. Uh, so it's just a small part of the examples we address with the toolbox. Um, but it's this example shows some particularity of uh, of the generate uh, of the diagram that we generate. So I, I have picked up uh, some example coming from the Tosca specification or from the HCNV specification uh, and some uh, and two example coming from uh, orchestrator to run dot and, um, and uh, the Torch uh, orchestrator. So, now, for the rest of the presentation, I will show you some diagrams that the, our toolbox could generate, and, and not would, uh, that uh, our toolbox generate. Uh, so, uh, 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 this first diagram re represents the um, uh, the set of normative types uh, of the Tosca specification. And in fact, we, we, this illustration could not be found anywhere um, in the specification. For instance, we, we don't have this big picture. And uh, even in the documentation of orchestrator, we, we could not have this, uh, uh, we, we don't have this uh, um, big picture. So of course, uh, this big picture it is too small to, to that and you could not see. So I, I will shift on another window to, to zoom on this uh, diagram. So 
In fact, the, the toolbox generate uh, uh, SDG or P, PNG uh, picture uh, figures. So here we will see um, figure uh, in the form in the SVG format. Um, so, but we 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 start with uh, the normative Tosca uh, types. Uh, uh, we collect all these types into a, a service template. And then we, we process this uh, template we, with the to Tosca toolbox tool chain, uh, toolbox, um, and we, we obtain the, this diagram. So uh, we, we could see all the capabilities, uh, all the interfaces, uh, all the node types, uh, all the uh, um, relationship they should be somewhere. So, so in, in fact, the, this first uh, kind of diagram is, is a good way to to have a a, a big view, a, a big picture of, for instance, a Tosca profile. Uh, we see all the types and. The arrows represent the relation between this type, inheritance or use or aggregation, or etc. So I, I, I remove to, to another. So, for instance, this first uh, uh, diagram is about the Tosca normative type, and we, we could see also the, the non normative type used in the Tosca specification. Uh, so, as we see, each type uh, is represented by uh, a class, uh, UML classes, and we could find the property, the attribute, the capability, the requirement defined by this type. And we could see the deriv derived from relation between two classes, two types, two Tosca types. And we could see also. So this kind of diagram is an appropriate view to, to, to see, to communicate, to, to understand a set of types or a, a Tosca profile. So I, I, I will continue uh, with another kind of uh, diagram. So to show you other kind of diagram, uh, I use one of the most complex uh, use case presented in the specification, this uh, in the Tosca specification. This uh, use case is a multi-tier one. So in, in fact, it's an, a use case that uh, combine Elasticsearch, Logslash, Kibana, uh, in fact, is an ELK uh, use case. So, so this is the most uh, complex uh, uh, and um, the most complex uh, example that we found in the specification. And in the specification, in the Tosca specification, there, there is two, two things. First, a logical diagram that represent what, what are the intention of the designer of this use case. And after, uh, th there is a, a service a template uh, written in uh, Tosca YAML uh, that implement uh, this, uh, in this intentions. Uh, so we, we start with uh, the YAML uh, file, 
and automatically we could generate uh, a graphical representation of this use case. So this graphical representation here is a deployment diagram. So where we could see all the node template of the example, and we could see which uh, node uh, host uh, which other nodes. For instance, an application server that is of the type uh, compute, embed, um, uh, host, several other comp nodes. Uh, for instance, an application server, Node.js, and this application server host another uh, application component uh, here, the business application PayPal Pizza Store. And this uh, application use a database, uh, and this database is embedded in the uh, database manager system, which is inside another compute. Uh, and in this uh, application, we, we have in green a set of nodes uh, of resource, application resources that uh, monitor the system and collect uh, all the logs of this system and st store this uh, log inside the application log uh, slash. So, this is one uh, uh, diagram that we could generate from for any um, service template. Um, and you, you could see that we could uh, configure the color, for instance, of the diagram to, to follow the logical diagram. The log logical diagram is just an informal uh, documentation of the use case. That here is a doc uh, generated documentation coming from the uh, YAML file uh, that we will deploy later. Uh, so we, we could have other view. We, we could zoom uh, on this. Uh, uh, on this diagram to, to see, for instance, uh, all the, um, the nodes um, uh, and the relation between the nodes. And here we, we use a component diagram. So this diagram allows us to, to see the connection between capability and uh, we, uh, capability and requirement that we don't see on the deployment diagram. And we could see on this, uh, this is a kind of zoom on the application. We could see capabilities and requirement inside the, the component diagram. So we, we could have different form of component diagram here the connection between capability and requirement are vertically represented. And uh, we could also represent this uh, relation, this connection uh, horizontally. Uh, this, this depends on what kind of view we want on the, the system. Uh, we, we could go a step uh, beyond uh, to, to see also the relationship used to connect uh, capability and uh, uh, requirement. So I will switch to the other. So here, here is just a zoom on the same uh, figure diagram. Uh, so here we, we could see um, what are exactly the relationship used to, to connect uh, one capability to one requirement 
So, in the way, uh, and in, in this other view, which is a zoom on the functionality of the application, we could see also all the capabilities of a node. For instance, for a compute here, we see the different capability of this compute. So I will continue. Um, and we could come back to the, the type, uh, the specific type used in this application, um, in this use case. So we, we could say, uh, the business uh, PayPal uh, pizza store not type, and we could see what are the mandatory uh, properties. In, in fact, it's in blue. Uh, we could see what are the mandatory requirements, and uh, we, we have also the arrow to represent uh, the, the, the relation between the type. So we, we could see all the, the types. I will skip some uh, diagrams. Um, so we, we, we could see the, the CloudNet toolbox to uh, as a, a microscope to, to see, uh, to go inside the uh, service, uh, Tosca service uh, template uh, and visualize uh, the information contained in this uh, uh, template. So, let's keep some. So, now what is also another point that is interesting is here we see the, the static structure of the use case. Uh, but it could be interesting to, to see uh, the dynamic uh, behavior of this uh, service template. And particularly, for instance, we, we could zoom to the uh, deploy and in, undeploy uh, workflows. So, and it, it's interesting to, to Sometimes it could be interesting to go inside the, the workflow. Here, these are uh, declarative workflow, deploy and undeploy. But what we do is that we transform this declarative workflow to imperative workflows. And so we generate a, a visual representation of any imperative uh, workflow. Uh, so, I will change my window to, to zoom uh, on this uh, workflow. And what could be interesting is to, to, uh, with this visualization, visualization of uh, um, workflow that we, we could see all uh, the smaller uh, boxes are activity, uh, the other, the, the box uh, uh, around activity are step, and the arrow represent the relation between step uh, in, the declared, in the imperative workflow. So, we, we could see all the, the, the workflow and it could be interesting if we want to optimize the workflow to, to study its uh, structure. Uh, and what we see, uh, the, the bar, uh, we have two kinds of bar, uh, green bar and orange bar. And in, in fact, uh, green bar, is uh, the uh, introduced parallelization of uh, step and activity. 
for instance, at the beginning of the workflow, all the steps that are no predecessor uh, will start in parallel. And uh, orange bar, we re represent the synchronization. For instance, to start uh, this step, I need to, to we, we need that this step is completed and we need that also this step is completed. Uh, so here we, 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 so we, we have a, a representation of uh, any kind of uh, imperative workflow. We see at the end, for instance, the workflow, the deeper workflow is completed when all the start uh, uh, step of uh, all the application comp nodes are completed. So we could see uh, the same thing. We could see that uh, we could analyze, or visualize, communicate uh, around uh, any uh, imperative uh, workflow. Um, Um, I, will, I will continue with other examples. So I, uh, I will just show you uh, an example uh, uh, taken from the HCNFV, um, one HCNFV specification. In, in, in fact, if you know, uh, the HC Institute uh, uh, currently defines uh, a standard for network uh, function virtualization. And this standard is uh, composed of uh, several documents. And one of these documents, SOL1, is based on the Tosca language. language. Uh, so in the SC and FV standard, uh, they could use uh, TOSCA uh, to define uh, network services or also virtual uh, network function and so on. So I, I will take, for instance, uh, an example of network service. Uh, this example is come from the uh, Sol one specification. It's the, the 17 uh, example, uh, which are in the Annex A. So we, we could see uh, with a class diagram um, the type defined uh, for this example. Uh, and later we, we, could we could use uh, the deployment diagram to see the structure of this uh, example. For instance, here we, we have uh, uh, a substitution mapping uh, node type. Uh, is, uh, the enclosing uh, box. And this, uh, this, uh, this is a, a substituting uh, uh, template. And inside the, there is a set of node, node uh, templates uh, with some uh, relationships uh, between them. So here, we, we have a, a network services composed by a virtual link. Uh, and to this virtual link are connected a set of uh, other network services or network services are represented in yellow in this uh, diagram. And we, we have a set of virtual network functions uh, represented by uh, 
uh, green uh, boxes. Uh, so, and this virtual, uh, this network service could use an external virtual uh, net, uh, virtual link. Uh, virtual link in the terminology of uh, Sol one is, is something to represent uh, network, uh, to, to, be, to simplify the, the vocabulary. Uh, so we, we could zoom on, on this uh, network service. And uh, in, in blue here, we, we see uh, the policy that we could apply to, to some node of this example. Um, so we could continue and we, we see the relationships templates uh, used for this example. Uh, and now is another kind of jaguar that is dedicated to uh, network uh, systems, uh, where in fact, here we simplify the, the representation to just show network in fact, is line here, tube, um, that represent the network. And we just, we, we filter uh, the node of the, the template, and we just select the nodes that are connected to the network. So we don't see all the nodes, but we are just focused on one aspect of the, uh, the topology. And uh, here we focus on the network uh, aspect of this topology. So now I, I will show you uh, another kind of uh, uh, visualization that we could produce. And I will move to another window. Um, so this example uh, here is a, 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 a virtual network function that uh, contains a node uh, and several policies uh, applied to this node. And in fact, here this policy are uh, some policy to, to manage the scale. Uh, and other policy to manage the L of the node, of the network function. So in Tosca, we, we, we could define trigger that is a way to, to implement a reactive um, uh, set of action. Uh, and for, for instance, if I go to, to one uh, trigger, I, I could see that uh, this trigger is uh, activated by one event uh, and the name of the, the event is uh, blah, 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 utilization. Um, and this event are uh, triggered by the orchestrator. And the policy receives this event. The policy could check some condition on the event uh, and on the node uh, on which uh, the policy uh, apply. And then if the condition is OK, it could execute a set of action. And we see here what operation is called on which node. So is a way to, to represent, um, uh, uh, to, to represent reactive behavior that we attach to a topo Tosca topology. Um, so I will continue. Uh, and we move to, 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 to another example. And th this example it, it, uh, 
come from uh, the 200 uh, orchestrator. And in, in fact, in the 200 uh, orchestrator that is developed by Tal Lion, and this uh, orchestrator was uh, already presented uh, in a, a previous uh, webinar. Um, and one of the most uh, complex examples provided with this uh, orchestrator is a telephony network services. And, and this, uh, uh, th this figure uh, is uh, informal documentation uh, provided with this example. Um, so, to illustrate the design of this uh, use case, uh, uh, Tan uh, draws uh, this picture to, sh to show all the, the uh, to, to have a big picture of representing this example. But this is an informal documentation and we, we could generate a, uh, documentation and diagram directly from the, the YAML uh, files of this example. So here is a, a diagram generated from, uh, um, from the template of this example, where we see the main uh, node, the three main nodes of this example. So we, we have two PDX um, and a, a, a network plan um, that connect this PDX. And we, we could also have a component diagram to, to see the capabilities and requirement of, of the nodes of this example. Uh, we could also go to uh, to class diagram to, to see the, the various uh, profile uh, defined in this example. For instance, uh, this example defines a telephony profile with a set of types. Uh, there is a, a node types here, a relation types, uh, capability types, and uh, data type. Um, and we could go in, in more complex uh, examples. So um, this is the last uh, example that um, uh, I propose to, to show you uh, today. Uh, in, in fact, uh, this example comes from uh, an orchestrator called Torch, and this example uh, is in is this use case is inspired of the well-known uh, stock shop uh, application uh, that uh, this uh, stock shop uh, application is used by many uh, um, person. To, to illustrate the use of uh, containerized uh, application that run on Docker or Kubernetes, for instance. And in the Torch orchestrator, they are build a use case based on the code of this application. And they just define, uh, they just, they, they define, uh, a Tosca topology to, to encapsulate uh, uh, the different containers of this application. So I will zoom on this uh, application. And, and what is interesting is that we, when we generate diagram, we could go in a lot of detail for, for instance, we, we could uh, associate uh, graphical uh, icon to each um, node type or relation type or relationship type. 
So, in fact, we, we go uh, beyond uh, just uh, UML uh, class diagram or UML diagram. So, we could uh, um, configure all many kinds of information uh, to, to generate diagrams that could be used to communicate with other people. Uh, on uh, a Tosca topology, a service topology, uh, or service templates. So this was my last example for, for today. Uh, we have another here that is just a component diagram uh, for the same example. Um, this was my last uh, example for today. Uh, I have many other examples, but I, I, what I would like to do is just to show you some possibilities uh, offered by the Tosca, the, the CloudNet uh, gen uh, generators. Um, and just uh, to let you uh, play with this, uh, with this toolbox. Uh, so to conclude my, my presentation and to be in time, um, uh, just two messages uh, that you could uh, come back uh, at home. Uh, firstly, uh, generating visual diagram uh, is a way to better understand, better communicate around uh, Tosca service templates. Um, and what is here interesting is that the diagram are automatically generated. Um, so it's a kind of reverse engineering that starts from the Tosca service template and generate the visual representation. And if you want to, to, to test, uh, to, uh, to play with this toolbox, uh, I just here you could find the URL to, to the code of the toolbox. Uh, so you, here you need to, to compile and run the, the toolbox. Uh, on your computer, uh, or Orange, uh, which uh, sponsors this work, uh, has already uh, deployed uh, a Tosca toolbox, uh, Tosca toolbox on the internet, and you could access directly to this toolbox. You just need to log to this toolbox, and uh, after you download. Uh, your your templates and automatically the application with uh, the web application will generate the diagram. So it's all for me. This will allow to 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 reply to some questions if you have. Thank you for your attention. Fantastic. Thank you, Philippe. That was wonderful. So we do already have some questions. Again, um, feel free if you haven't already um, put those in the, qu the question and answer box, feel free to do that at this time. So the first question is, how is the toolbox licensed? And may I download it and use it myself? Yes, it's open source. Uh, I don't uh, if I remember, it should be. Uh, you, you can send that. I don't remember the, the name of the license, but it's open source. Okay. Uh, and you could download it. Okay. And use it, of course. Philippe, do you want to send me that um, link and I will distribute it when we distribute the link of the presentation? Okay. Uh, 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 I, I think that in, in the invitation, 
the link are already awesome. present at the end of the invitation. Oh yeah, okay, terrific. Um, okay, the next question, does the toolbox use graphics and is it a proprietary graph formatter? Graphics, graphics. In, in, in fact, we, we, all, we generate a diagram in dot or in plant UML. And then this, uh, the dot uh, languages or the, or the plant UML are compiled to graphic with uh, graphics. So the, the tool under the, the toolbox are also open source and uh, open. Fantastic. Okay, um, which Tosca features did you find most challenging, <clears throat> excuse me, most challenging to implement and visualize? Mm, um, all the, um, per, per, perhaps the workflow. Um, if I need to select one feature, I, I will say the workflow, the imperative workflow, because it could be quickly complex. We could uh, rapidly generate complex um, um, diagram, um, and we we need to. The, the generator need to to traverse the workflow to understand the link between the step. Perhaps if I should I should select one uh, complex feature, I would say workflow. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Um, so. Tall, I, I'm, uh, yeah, sure. I think you've got your hand up. Yeah, Jane can go ahead and allow you to speak. Have at it. Are we still on that? Oh, I Jane? Hmm. Um, okay, while well, we get that. He should be able to speak. Tal, can you can you hear us? Okay, let's okay. get that sorted out. Um, here's another question. Are there missing features that would simplify the task of visualizing Tosca templates? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, could you replace the question? Are there... Um, are there missing features that would simplify, make it easier to visualize the Tosca templates? I don't see, I see no, no missing feature. Um, I have nothing to, to, to reply to this question. Okay, so. that's good, right? <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, so we've got some raised hands. Let's see what we can do here. Um, yeah, so it looks like Tal, you can ask your question. Jane, I'm gonna promote him to a panelist. Maybe that's the issue. What do you think? Let's do that. All righty. So there we go. Good enough. And then Chris also has his hand up. We are going to, um, like, while Tal comes on, and you should be able to ask your question now, Tal. Hi, can you hear me now? Yep, yes. we can. Uh, okay. Uh, well, it's, it's a pleasure to be a panelist, suddenly. So uh, thank you, Philippe. This is uh, uh, so interesting uh, and, and great to see the results of the work. Of course, I especially enjoyed uh, seeing uh, Turan.Visualize. I, I wanted to, to, to point out, somebody asked the question over whether this is graphical. I think there might be room uh, maybe to collaborate here on something. Um, in Puccini, I also have a very simple visualizer, uh, nowhere as sophisticated as this, but 
Uh, the difference is in Puccini, I generate an HTML page with JavaScript with these networking libraries that turn it not only uh, graphical, but very interactive. So you can click on various boxes and get information, et cetera. So um, uh, there might be room here. It's all open source, of course. So there might be room here to collaborate and allow the, the Tosca toolbox to really generate such an HTML page and allow maybe mm. a more intergraphic inter output, uh, interactive output from the toolbox. Um, and so it's something. Yeah, we can do it together, or somebody else uh, who wants to contribute to this work. Uh, it's all open source. Okay. We, that's we, why. That's we, why we yeah. have those. Fantastic. I'm sorry, Philippe. Oh, I, I just, uh, I just would like to say that uh, I, I will contact Al for doing this. Super. Okay, so Chris, um, as I introduced earlier, would be joining us. Chris, would do you have some comments that you would like to make at this time? Well, um, uh, yes, I want to echo Tal's comment that this is uh, very exciting work, very impressive. So, Philippe, congratulations. This is really, uh, uh, really very, very impressive and very helpful to the community. Um, I have a couple of questions, though, if you don't mind. Um, so, it sounds like you have your toolbox translates. Tosca type definitions and Tosca service templates into UML, and then you use fairly standard UML visualizers to visualize. Is, is that a correct um, characterization? Yes, you could see this. Yeah. So I wonder if there may be perhaps some Tosca features that are difficult to express in UML. For example, yes. we have um, refinements, which in the 1.3 spec are fairly loosely defined in Tosca version 2.0, we have significantly um, more, uh, more concrete specification for how refinements are done. But the one area in particular is refinements of capabilities and relationships. So if you have a derived type that refines a requirement from a parent type and a derived capability that, that derives um, or specializes or augments a capability in a parent type. You may also then specialize the relationship between those two. Is there a way to illustrate <clears throat> that refinement and, and how the relationships that are the result of that re uh, refinement have <laughs> related themselves, if you will? So I'm wondering how you might be able to visualize that. Yes. In fact, uh, I have some, some examples that where we could show that visualization could help us to see uh, design problems. So for, for instance, in the case that you, you say, uh, it, visually, we, we will see that th there is a problem. Um, or I, I could show you uh, perhaps another example. Um, it's not exactly what the, the case uh, you have, but I um, know. Uh, um, For, for instance, uh, you see uh, this diagram? Yep. Uh, th this diagram is, is generated from a torch uh, use case. Uh, and the first time that I generated th this diagram, I, I, I see something strange that th there is uh, a relationship that is root of type root here that yeah. connect one node to another node. And this is strange. And we visually, we, we see that there is something strange. And when you, we go to the code, we see that uh, this is really implemented like that. Um, uh, so, for, so, just to show you uh, quickly uh, an example that 
where the visualization could help us to, to see that there is some design defect. Yeah. And these are defects that the parser wouldn't and the validator wouldn't pick up or? Um... Yes. Uh, uh, for, for instance, this is not, uh, this example is not, this is not um, a typing error. This is correct uh, in terms of, uh, this, this example respects all the typing rules of Tosca. Ah, but interesting. We, we, we see that this is something strange. Um, this, this is possible, but it's a bad, bad design. Bad design, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the visualization, in, in certain cases, is a good way to, to see um this, this thing uh, i will try to to find an ex another example for for instance uh i, I will play in live um so i i need to, to search so here i am on uh, x opera uh, example or ge uh, diagram generated from X opera examples, and uh, I, I will just show you. Perhaps we will see uh, an example. Um, uh, yes, certainly here. Um, so, for 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 instance, um, in, in this example. Uh, what we see that th there is a node that have a requirement to name a receive notification, and there is another node that have a capability receive notification. And intuitively, we could think that this, uh, this requirement should be connected to this capability. But what is implemented in the example is that this uh, requirement is connected to the fixture capability of the node. This right. is not a typing error. The, the, the code, the Tosca code is correct, is a uh, design defect. Right, very interesting. Uh, and we, uh, I see uh, on a large number of, uh, on several examples, that sometimes we could find a bad design in example. And the design could be improved by better uh, use of the Tosca tag system. In fact, uh, the error, uh, the design error is that the, the requirement is badly uh, typed. Right. Yeah, so, so it would be very helpful to. Um, to and we to, could see uh, some problems that, um, uh, that th there is, uh, currently I don't see another way to to identify this uh, kind of problem. Right, it'd be very useful to see if we can, based on these types of errors that show up only in visualization, if we can somehow um, improve the language to prevent these mistakes from happening. <laughs> mm, uh, yeah. So that would be very, very helpful feedback. So thank you very much. And um, Jane, I think, we're close to out of time, yes. so we are. Would you like to say a couple? Yes, uh, thanks couple again, Philippe. This was um, this was very impressive and uh, um, a very different Thank angle you. on on how to um, uh, showcase Tosca and, and Tosca implementations. So very impressive work. Uh, thank you.
Um, our next um, installation in the series will be the last Wednesday of um, February. And at that point, I believe we'll have um, Adam Suzis um, present um, Unfurl, which is another implementation uh, of Tosca, where Tosca is being used for um, um, cloud operations using, um, using Git. So that's promised to be a very uh, exciting presentation as well. So look forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Philippe, on behalf of Oasis, and thank you folks for attending today. We appreciate it.